Good morning, everyone. Thanks for joining us for North Dakota Today. We're especially happy on this Friday. Hallelujah, right? The weather was gorgeous last night. I know we're dealing with some wind, but these warmer temperatures, we'll I'm like, fall it. is back. I'm just so happy and ready for the weekend. And you know, I, you and I don't like wind, but you know the farmers right now are like, hey, anything yep. to dry some of this stuff out, we'll take wind, whatever. So. So one of these days I actually woke up, I was like, okay, I'm, I'm okay with the wind. Yeah, we definitely need to do some drying out. I know I was just talking to Bailey Hurley in the newsroom. She's heading to Jamestown where they're dealing with some yeah. serious flooding issues. So it's, uh, you know, really region-wide that we need. We need more wind. Record that and keep it forever. <laughs> I will never say that again. <laughs> and kudos to Fargo. Fargo has donated a bunch of sandbags. Yeah, like 40,000 of them. Yeah. I might have filled a couple of those. <laughs> I went and helped fill, and then we didn't really need them. So... That's all right. That's they might need your muscles to go oh. and, and carry them off the crates today. So, Okay, just give me a call. I'll head on out to Jamestown. <laughs> I do have a lot of muscle to share. Uh, this also has me really excited today. No, flooding does not have me excited. This is a live look in space. You know how I am. I'm very like, go girl, uh, women power, lady boss. History is taking place right now, and you're, you're watching it right now. This is the first all-female spacewalk in NASA's 61-year history. Wow. 61 years? What? This hasn't ha how has this not happened before? Astronauts Christina Cook and Jessica Meir are the team behind the first all-female spacewalk. The pair are currently fixing the station's battery charge, which will take them more than five hours. Uh, there have been 220 spacewalks at the International Space Station since back in 1998, but according to NASA, only 14 women have participated in spacewalks. And I actually, I, I think that I heard this, right? They had some issues. I don't think this was the only reason it was canceled before, but they didn't have spacesuits small enough. For, for the real? women too, you know. So I was like, "Well, how is that? There's little, uh, little guys, little guys that you know too, yeah. go up into space." So I just am so excited about this, and I know as well. Uh, I will uh, give some props to our favorite scientist, Lisa Green, has been following this very closely as well. So uh, I always like to get um, her opinion on things like this, and of course, you know, everyone. She's all of us are, but she's very into STEM and encouraging women to, yeah. you know, do the math and science. And so this is this is cool for all women and very exciting for girls. Um, well, you have a daughter. I have two daughters. I, every time I, I see women just, you know, making history, I think, yeah, that's what I think. So super cool. I think you're going to continue to hear about this throughout the day and um, five hours. I was like, well, how long is it going to last? Are we going to be able to take a live look? And, <laughs> The whole day. Uh, this, they're going to be at it for a while. So I suppose things you can't work that fast when we're uh, in outer space. So. so you did the Blue Angels thing. If NASA were to call and say, hey, we're going to do a, a demo trip to space, yes. you in? Or? Yes, sign me up. I would totally really? do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If it was part of, you know, something like that, it's not like I want to spend my money on the, you know, private personal <laughs> trip to the moon or anything like that. But I would... I would love to experience this for sure. I think that would be incredible. Are you going to help colonize Mars maybe like they're maybe. talking about? You never know. You never know. <laughs> never say never. Maybe my that's daughters true. will, you know. Yeah, that, so. that's very, you never know. Okay, so empowering, loving that story, women killing this it. This one's just... This one, okay, let's go back to the haters. You know, I'm just going to share this story because... It'll hopefully get you worked up like it did me, and it's sadly not new. I feel like we've even had this discussion together. A meteorologist in St. Louis received some unsolicited advice from a woman named Mary. This was the message, quote, Do you ever watch yourself giving the weather report? Mary wrote, Seems that you need a girdle for the stomach overhang, which shortens the front of your dress. Today was not the first time I have noticed it. Maybe you should wear a top that covers the bulge in your stomach. What? You would never say that to someone in person. Like, I, I can't. It just, it upsets me so much. But, and we all get these. You know, we talk a lot. People think that we're easy targets, women on TV. Well, Tracy Hinson, the meteorologist, um, actually responded to the woman. And uh, she said, well, calling her a, I don't know, most people call them trolls. I'm trying to get to the, dear Mary, here it is. <clears throat> yes, I do watch my air checks. No, I will not be strapping myself into a girdle because <laughs> you don't like my belly. I like pasta, bread and cheese too much to obsess over my weight. I like my body, mm -hmm. and that's all that really matters. Hashtag no more fat shaming. And you know what? Is she not just adorable anyway? She is, and 
I shouldn't even say that. She's a smart, talented meteorologist, yeah. and that's, you know, the thing she said, too, when I talk about Lisa Green being a scientist, uh, I think this meteorologist said, too, she, she got into weather because she loved the science yeah. behind it, you know? And, you know, we all have a Mary in our life. What happens to a lot of you guys? I mean, there's somebody here that put something out on Twitter and some just unbelievable comments that happened, and she was like, hey, thank you so much for the compliment that was sort of a backhanded compliment. But I mean, you, the one thing that I had a conversation with this person, she's like, you know, think about this, Chris. Like, you get in this business, what if I went into a school and like your son or daughter is getting bullied? And I said, you know what? Here's how we're gonna solve the problem. We're gonna bully you more. You just need to kind of get over it. That's gonna, and she's like, that's what we do here in this world. And when you get in the media, you just have to kind of go, I'm gonna get bullied. I'm gonna have to learn to deal with it. And, and that's how it is. And I mean, some of the things that, that you guys have Women said- Women were a lot. Does anyone ever call and say they don't like your tie? I think maybe one time. We, we've had it. But, but for the most but... part, like 1,000 times, women are, you know, they don't like that they can, if I wore sleeveless, or they don't like that color, they don't like my hair, that lip color, um, they don't like what I discuss. And it's typically they think from that I'm women, unhappy. Right? Hmm. Oh, yeah, it's usually from women. So I don't, I don't get that. Like, what, who has the time, number one, and why? <laughs> I know. I sent one of the last emails I got to my sister, and she was like, I wish I had as much time as that woman. <laughs> and I was like, it, it reminds you, you know, and it's true. You have to, like, shake it off, and, you know, it's crazy talk. You can't, but you're human. It hurts. Right, yeah. It hurts our feelings. We're real people. I'm just a, a mom of two kids who have been trying to do my best and, you know, work and earn a paycheck and... You know, then I have to... But what I don't understand is why Why would a woman even take the time to email something like that? That's what I don't get. I don't know. I don't under... We should lift each other up. Say, hey, you're killing it today. Yeah, like, let's talk about the spacewalk, right? You know? I know. I know. I don't want to dwell on it, but it just got me fired up. Can you tell? <laughs> <laughs> so, I, like, yesterday, I saw it yesterday, and I was like, we are talking about this today. No more fat shaming, no more, you know, any, uh, just be nice, just be kind. You know what, what's the saying? If you don't have anything nice to say, don't exactly. say anything at all. And you know, they put these out, some of these emails go to the whole newsroom, you know, and then some of them are on Twitter, or some are on Facebook. You know, it's not like you're even, thank you for sharing your dislike with the world. Uh. I know, anyway, let's be kind today and into the weekend. Chris, um, are you counting the days down till Christmas? I actually am sort of kind of getting that headspace a after, little bit. After the snow, I kind of was thinking <laughs> was that. Like, oh, okay, man. in case you're counting, we're now 10 weeks away from Christmas. So start planning your gift list, and I can help you with what you're going to get me this year, Chris, because Neiman Marcus this. has their annual Christmas book out, and that legendary fantasy gift catalog, mm, I would look good in this. <laughs> <laughs> How about this for an over-the-top gift? Uh, that is the uh, 007 Aston Martin, designed by James Bond himself. Seven hundred thousand and seven dollars. 007. Yes. Wow. But that's what, what is this like house apartment? Okay, this is, is this? actually this is no, this is for your dog. This is uh, rock a rock star puppy house? and Denise Richards. <laughs> These dog houses are designed specifically, um, you know, with whatever you could imagine. A replica of the Taj Mahal, not off that limits. That is priceless. Seventy thousand. What? $70,000. You have to like your pup for that. And now we're seeing beautiful pictures. This, you know, for, for the millennial on your list who <laughs> wants an experience, uh, an exclusive round-the-world trip via private jet to five world-class destinations. How much? $575,000. Wow. It's a deal. It's a steal. I would love that trip, though. Oh, I know. Looking at those pictures, just That looked love incredible. It. And I'd roll up in my Austin Martin and just... <sighs> <laughs> Looking good. Okay, as we're uh, moving into the weekend, uh, we want to remind everybody there's another Veterans Honor Flight of North Dakota, Minnesota happening this weekend. Oh, nice. And, uh, of course, they're going to leave Sunday. It's a real quick trip. Sunday, be back on Monday, and they're inviting everyone to come and welcome home our heroes at Hector International Airport. You should arrive around 7.30 on Monday and uh, we always send a crew with to help share the yeah. stories I think this time around it's going to be Callie oh, and uh, Dave so be watching for those stories as well good for them also want to remind you the bison are home this weekend so please tune into the farmers union insurance bison football pregame show kicks off at 1 30 p.m. with our outstanding team of Beth and Alex and everyone there and then 2 30 p.m. in the dome the dome's gonna be rocking against Mizzou State VNDSU. So a lot of people are over, kind of overlooking this game. 
don't do that. And then at 10.30, you can watch the uh, Coaches Show on KX4. And uh, you know what? I was a little tired this morning. I have enough coffee in me now. Fargo Forest were back at Schultz Arena last night. I went to the game last night you. as well. They won in overtime. So really? it was a fun night. And that just reminds me, we're giving away four packs of tickets to the Fargo Forest. Just go to valleynewslive.com and click on the contest tab to get yourself signed up to win. Every Tuesday, we're giving away these tickets. This contest is sponsored by the Fargo Forest and Buffalo Wild Wings. Good stuff. Coming up next. We're talking about the Cub Scouts. Were you a Cub Scout? I was back kid? in the day, yeah. All right. Good stuff. We're going to talk about uh, how you can get involved and talk about that delicious popcorn they're selling, too.